thank you for everybody joining me tonight, wherever you are, whatever state, country. Uh, it's a pleasure to be, uh, as an educator, to be in front of you to share some very exciting information tonight. I'll tell you about that as we go by. And tonight's uh, uh, topic is it's time to think pink. And this is the introduction to pink aesthetics for patient satisfaction and profit. Everything has changed since COVID. The financial models, the uh, the, the products and how we get products, uh, how we deliver products to our patients, how do we sterilize them, how do we keep safe? And the exciting news is that I have something very unique and innovative to teach you tonight, and it's something you do every day in your practice. You're using two color composites. Now we're just going to do the same preparations and everything, only we're going to be using pink. So here are the objectives tonight. We're going to learn about the gingival shades, pink, as an aesthetic option for gingival recession. And we'll talk about how prevalent gingival recession is into our population and what happens when these patients don't choose grafting surgeries. Not everybody will do that. And then we're going to learn about the pink composite materials that are available in the market place today in uh, for by your dental distributors and I will not tell you what one is good or one is not good I'm going to tell you the differences in these materials and how do you select them how do you use them and then what I would call the tips and tricks for restoring pink composites maybe some of you are using them already I applaud you for doing that Maybe some of those who are using it would like to know more information and learn how to use it better. And the tip, tips and tricks, there's a number of things I can share with you tonight that I've learned myself about how do you do the shade selection, the blending, are you layering? How do you do the adhesion? How do you do the preparation? How do you do sulcus uh, creation, finishing, polishing? And how do you identify your practice perception to be a leader in pink composites in your community? Because um, you will get referrals off them. I have patients go on the websites, they'll do Google searches on pink composites and they'll look at my articles or some of my clinical cases that I've published. But you can differentiate yourself from your other colleagues in the area and post this on your website or show some of your clinical cases. This is me. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be a dentist uh, for 46 years. And that gives me license to look at the changes, the trends, what has been popular, what is new, what is innovative. And I'm gonna bring the, this to you today in a very objective way. I'm not a seller. I'm an educator and a teacher. I'm here to transfer my information and knowledge to you in the best way I can. Now, let's give some credit. I want to give credit to Shofu for letting me be a co-developer of the Pink Composites, beautiful two gingiva. Um, they've been very generous, and we've come up with some very good ideas and solutions for you to use Pink Composites. And... Now, uh, the Sunshine Act, uh, just for disclosure, that I have been paid uh, by Shofu, and I speak for many different companies. I teach for people companies I respect. I teach for companies that uh, let me say what I should say in a very professional way. Uh, Shofu has paid me an honorarium for this presentation tonight, and if any photos you see have not been photoshopped, they've just been cropped, uh, maybe changed the exposure a little bit. So uh, let's go to philosophy. It is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken the joy in the creative expression and, uh, and knowledge. That is Albert Einstein. This is what we as educators and teachers do. And one of the greatest values of a mentor, which I am a mentor, as with many of the catapult speakers, is the ability to ability to see ahead what others cannot see and help them navigate a course to the destination. This is tonight. This is how we will 
make a trade for uh, tooth color composites to pink gingival composites in a very easy to understand way. Now, the thing about the future of dentistry, if you look at gingival recession, it's one of the most common oral health conditions found in our patients today. The gingival architecture represents the frame of the teeth. And if you don't restore it properly with gingival grafting, uh, connective tissue grafting, um, uh, pink porcelains on implants, uh, pink porcelain on your indirect restoration, or the pink composites, it will impair the, the three-dimensional outcome of the aesthetics for the patients. This is very, very interesting. Now, when you start looking at the age groups of where you're gonna find gum recession, you're probably not gonna see it in uh, juveniles or young people. Um, you're gonna start to see it in more of the middle age or the elderly population. Uh, and as according to the literature, in the 65 year old plus age, 64% of the patient base has isolated or some form of periodontal disease. And there are more prevalent uh, periodontal uh, conditions in males, Hispanics, people with uh, xerostomia, sleep apnea, uh, some medications, diabetics, and smokers. And with the aging population, let's talk about this. At the patients who are 65 and older will double between 2015 to 2060. The patients of 85 and older will triple between 2015 and 2060. This is your population base. This is going to be your target base where these patients are uh, have issues and conditions and defects that they may not want with uh, connective tissue grafting. Now, the other thing that is important to note that baby boomers control 70% of the wealth of this country, and those are the people like myself that have money to pay to look good. And if you want gingival symmetry, if you have exposed roots, if you have sensitive roots, if you have things that don't appear right or uh, make things unesthetic, then you're going to look for alternatives. And what we call dark triangles, what we call dark roots that uh, have a uh, gum recession, this is unfamiliar negative space. Unfamiliar means that people don't like what they see. Uh, patient, uh, people around you looking at, a, uh, at somebody else's mouth might see a dark crown, a diastema, a dark margin on a crown and they're going to see roots exposure, and they're going to see things that they don't like, and that's called unfamiliar, unfamiliar negative space. So do you see uh, gingival recession in your practice? The answer is yes. Every day you see it. Uh, you see it in different ways. You see it in uh, recession, exposed root surfaces, wedge-shaped defects. You see things that are asymmetrical. One tooth might have it, the other tooth does not. And you're gonna see it uh, as, especially with the aging of our population, you're gonna see it over, over, over again. So how are we gonna treat this today? What do we do? We have to offer practical, aesthetic, functional alternatives for, uh, to, for these gum recession patients today. And we have to improve their oral health and uh, recreate the gingival symmetry with very special products that are bioactive. We're gonna get into this. We have to develop a treatment plan for gum recession today. It has to be cost effective, therapeutic, minimally invasive, and non-surgical. Now, from the periodontal standpoint, connective tissue grafting is certainly a great biological result. And the, the, the gifted surgeons can graft the gum tissue, make it look good, but what if the patient does not want to go through the healing, the surgical phase, the, the cost, uh, the concept of surgery itself, 
what are we going to do and what options do we have with our patients? Are on gingival defects, are we going to put the white back up on the root and make a disproportional height to width ratio that doesn't look as aesthetic as it could? Or can we look at the pink option and use the white technique, but just change the color? And that's about what we're going to be doing tonight. So we can look at this as traditional composites. We can go teeth up, moving the, the white up to the uh, gingival seam, or we can go gums down. And this is the new improved aesthetic option that thanks to Shofu, we've developed uh, a wonderful way to um, treat these uh, defects. And we will bring you information and a hands-on workshop at the end of the program tonight. So what is pink aesthetics today? Is pink aesthetics is an illusion. Uh, I was the first one to publish uh, pink uh, aesthetics in the literature uh, right after Christian, Christian Coachman. I know a lot about this and I, I'm very curious how things work and I'm very creative on how to solve things that nobody else is doing. Pink aesthetics is an illusion. It's the illusion of gum tissue where it no longer exists. It's a non-surgical approach to connective tissue grafting. It reduces and eliminates sensitivity of exposed roots. And just think about this. If you have unsupported gingiva and you have root recession, you, your epithelial gum tissue uh, on your marginal uh, gingiva is under assault right away. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. So if we restore the, uh, the mucogingival uh, connection uh, with or without sulcus, we have something for the gum tissue to nest upon. And it's minimally invasive. It's done in a single appointment. Um, it's made possible by dental materials that are bioactive and therapeutic. This is essential, especially when you're in the um, uh, class five or the root recession defects. You get great appreciation from your patients when you show them a mirror and they see pink instead of white. And it's a practice builder. I've uh, gotten referrals for many different patients because of what I've done and they communicate this with others. In composites is not new. Um, the dental industry, the dental laboratories have been using it for a long time. And they have, uh, Vita has uh, gum colored composites and they have different shade tabs for this. And now thanks to Shofu, we've developed a color mixing chart that you can make custom colors for layering and to put simulated uh, uh, gingiva or what I call pink prosthetics, we're gonna put that in there. This is not a new procedure, it's a new color. And when you see uh, gingival recession in your patient base, all you have to do is think white, but use pink. I'm gonna offer you tips and tricks as we go along. And what we're gonna do is concentrate on the gingival recession and uh, further uh, webinars and workshops, we will be more uh, apt to be restoring uh, dark triangles and things like that. So pink composite doesn't require a different technique. It just requires a different color and you achieve an aesthetic outcome that is much more uh, appreciated by your patient base. So where do we get pink composites? Well, there's less manufacturers and uh, um, distributors that dispense the pink composite because everybody's focused on white. Everybody wants a B1, they want a B1 bleach, they want an A2, a translucent, they want milky white, uh, pearl frost, they know all the nuances of white aesthetics, but where do we get the pink? Well, not many. Voco makes a pink composite that has one shade and three different colored uh, tints underneath. Colzer has a, um, 
uh, one shade called gum. Uh, that's one. Uh, uh, Alternant makes permaflow with a pink composite. Uh, that's very good. And you can buy these on a eBay, but these aren't distributors. These it, that eBay is a marketplace. I certainly would not uh, purchase anything uh, on eBay unless it was a brand name. Now, not all gingiva is the same. When you look at our diverse population that we have today and increasing diversity, we have different ethnicities and those patients need custom colors because just as a denture base, we can't use the same uh, shade of denture base universally throughout our population. So what we will be doing is creating and show you how to create custom colors um, with a shade uh, mixing chart that can let you create the intermediate shades for uh, all ethnic populations. Where do I get uh, the pink composites from Shofu? Beautiful two pink. Um, we get it at uh, Benko, Shine, Patterson. You can buy it through any of the major distributors. And there'll be some incentives here tonight when we um, start going into the workshop that we'll be offering at the end of this presentation. Um, I think you'll be very pleased uh, what you can get for a uh, cost savings. Now, this is very interesting, is that when we look at the beautiful two, this is a spinoff of the beautiful two uh, tooth color material, and we've developed five blendable shades, dark pink, light pink, uh, brown, orange, and violet. Now, these could be used as one shade only. That's no problem. I think you're doing your patients a service by just using one shade of pink. And then when you look at the color mixing chart, the uh, five uh, colors are listed on the top, but then just like in a paint store, uh, a fabric store, you can start mixing and matching these colors to come up with intermediate colors that are custom. All you have to do is hold a laminated um, mixing chart that you will receive if you sign up for the um, hands-on you just uh, hold that up to the patient's gum tissue and mix and match and put a, a increment of composite on the tooth and light cure it, and then you'll find your custom color. So Shofu is the first one that has developed the mixing chart, and I give them credit. Uh, Shofu has the full um, array, the full um, uh, armamentarium. They've got uh, the toolkit that you'll see, the adhesion, the burrs, the polishers, the finishers, and with the custom beautiful two gingiva, I think it's um, something you have to take a serious look at. The custom colors too can just be used as one, one layer, use it as a white technique, only use pink, or you can do uh, two layers and one with a more for dimension and sulcus reproduction, which we'll talk about. Um, the blending of these colors gives you a more precise uh, shade. So we'll keep that in mind as we move forward. Now, this keeps it getting, gets better. When you look at the, uh, uh, the fillers in uh, gingiva, uh, beautiful two gingiva, these are bio-interactive, bioactive. They are the best uh, material to put on uh, gingival recession areas because that is ripe for plaque. That's ripe, ripe for biofilm. And if you look at the therapeutic technology that they have, the, it's called the gymers. And there's nothing else like it in the marketplace, especially in the gingival um, area. They have the antibacterial effect, which has a reduction of plaque formation. Now, you tell me, does it get any better than that? Well, according to the gymers, then they have acid neutralization effect where they can moderate the pH. And anytime you can moderate pH, usually you're harboring 
bacteria, could be anaerobes, could be strep uh, mutans. And what you want to do is quarantine them by raising the pH and the gymers do this. And the tooth strengthening um, effect that they have, the fluorapatite strontium appetite creation, is that when the gymers uh, react, have ionic exchange, the tooth surface is actually stronger after you have the ionic exchange than the original surface was. It can reduce and eliminate secondary caries because either you can release or uptake fluoride. These are very bioactive in that way, and they're therapeutic for the rest of the life of the restoration. So if we are going to invent a uh, gingival shade, we would want that to be uh, interactive with the oral environment to promote the healing, reduce the sensitivity, and especially the plaque. Okay, if you look at a study that's very uh, interesting and documented, uh, the slide on the left is the gymers. And if somebody didn't brush their teeth for 24 hours, you see very little plaque or uh, non-plaque formation. And without the gymers, you see a conventional composite and you'll see the plaque in how it is populated on the surface. Now, when you're, when you're nesting next to gingiva, you do not want plaque there because that causes gingival irritation and inflammation. So when I show you how to uh, uh, use a white technique, but use pink composite, I'll show you how to place that so we don't have any um, comorbidities with the material placement and irritate the gum tissue. This is pink. Now, if you look at this beautiful uh, gingival tissue, you see sulcus. On eight and nine, you see stippling. Uh, these are all possible with the um, two-layer technique, but we can just use one layer. We don't have to create a sulcus. We can just do a good service for our patients and just put one layer in using your pink, your white technique, but we're using a different color. One of the things I coined was the trilogy of pink aesthetics. And the trilogy of pink aesthetics is gingival recession. And again, with an aging population, I would get very familiar on treating these defects with pink. It's just a, diff, just a different color. And you can use your white technique if you're placing uh, white into uh, gingival recession and uh, you don't have any issues. Uh, things aren't coming apart. If you're not uh, causing gingival irritation, uh, you have a successful technique. We're just suggesting you use white. It's a great benefit of standard of practices that you can use today. Black triangles, the unfamiliar negative space. You can see there, people don't like that. When they look at it, they stare at it. And if we can um, uh, regenerate the, the pink equation using direct restoratives, beautiful to gingiva, that's a big, big deal. Um, exposed crown and bridge margins, I restore these all the time is that instead of taking the crown off if the patients can't afford them, they don't want to do that. We just reestablish the uh, pink part of the equation using a beautiful two gingiva. Now, if we let nature be our teacher and we correlate the materials according to nature, it's both pink and the white. What is pink? Where does it stop? What is white? Where does that go? What is the junction? It, what is the aesthetic biological seam between pink and white? This is something that we haven't been taught. There's, to my knowledge, there are no workshops until now uh, for pink aesthetics, for prosthetic gingiva, whatever you want to call it, and to actually um, collaborate with your periodontist because they too have patients that can't 
be treated with connective tissue grafting. The, the thing about these, um, t these cases that I've selected here tonight is that I wanted to take you into the first clinical case, which is your way. You can think of white, but use pink. You can hold a color mixing chart against the patient's gum tissue and pick one shade. That's a great start. You can pick two shades and custom mix them. I'll show you how to do that. We can talk about retentive preparations in the Burr kit I created or non-retentive, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever works for you. We can talk about a flowable subbase to establish the uh, adaption and to reduce polymerization shrinkage and polymerization stress. We don't have to use that. You can just use one shade, one, one preparation, just like you've always been used to, and only we're using a different color. Here's a wonderful case. This is where I'd like you to start, start your journey. When you see, especially on a canine, whether it's toothbrush abrasion, whatever the cause is, is you have a defect. And it's aesthetic, it's, it's biological, because as you can see, there's no uh, gum tissue that's, that's supporting that. It's been pushed down and you'll get further gum recession as a result. This is where I want you to start your journey. One shade, one preparation, using your white technique, only we're going to use a different color. This is for everyday dentistry. This is what you call it as a one surface, two surface, but you're doing your patients a favor. Um, you can start doing these tomorrow uh, with your technique, or you can learn a little bit tonight and borrow some from my technique and perhaps sign up for the, the pink workshop that we're going to offer you. I'll show you some tips and tricks. You can have best practices. You can differentiate yourself from your competitors. You can stop with no sulcus. Making a sulcus and creating a sulcus is very creative. And I think it shows your creativity and your artistic ability. Once you've restored these teeth, which I'm going to show you, you've given the patient pink aesthetics. Whether it's one layer, multi-layered, blended, everything, it does satisfy your creative um, ability within yourself. You can add dimension. And in my advanced courses, I'll show you how to put texture and um, uh, stippling in, in your artificial gingiva or your beautiful too. The first layer is going to be color. That's all we're going to do is choose a color. You would choose an A1. Maybe we'll choose dark pink. You have to have a way to use color. So in this case, you could either use one color only. Nothing wrong with that. Just use your white technique and put your pink in there. Or we go to uh, your color mixing chart and maybe take two colors and see what they look like. And then if you're going to blend them or customize them, what you do is you squish them with your nitrile gloves and you roll it into a ball. You place it on the root surface without adhesion and you light cure it and see if that's the color that you're going to use in the future. And you put that in the chart. Now, I've developed the Burr kit, and I'll tell you why uh, um, this is a good, good thing. Um, I did uh, gold foils on my national boards, and this was with GV Black uh, Class 5 gold foil preps, which ha are, uh, have undercuts, slight undercuts in everything, and um, they're retentive that way. The Class 5 area is the most uh, dynamic uh, part of the tooth where the enamel is thinnest and all the uh, stress distribution 
um, comes right down into the class five area, and that's where you get debonding and you get things that pop off because they're not retentive. The scout burrs are two, they're pear-shaped diamonds, and it gives you the primary configuration of the outline, which I'll show you in the tips and tricks, is we want to establish a primary outline of where the, the white uh, stops and the pink starts. And notice we don't touch the gum tissue. We don't have to place cord. We wanna stay away from that connection right there. Once we use an inverted cone for uh, retention, or you don't have to, you don't. You can use your own burrs. Um, you can use anything you want that pertains to your successful white technique. Um, that's okay. Always have a good uh, gingival health. When we're restoring these, we don't want to have bleeding getting into our adhesion, into our layering. So if we have to, you could place a piece of retraction cord. Um, doesn't have to have a uh, uh, hemodent on it. Um, you could do, um, I do uh, articane 4% and put it into the papilla uh, around the site to cut the blood flow down so we don't get any bleeding or irritation. And as always in the literature, selective etch is always a good thing. And you leave that on uh, the superior uh, margin. And the big takeaway tonight is there is no beveling in pink composite. Pink doesn't show well as a graduated bevel, whether it's a radius bevel, a short bevel, you have butt joints. So don't bevel your pink composites. Now, do you need to put acid etch into the dentin? It's a surfactant. So the answer is yes, if you do a total etch technique, um, you certainly can. I do not do that. I do disinfect uh, at all given times and control the microbes. One of the keen things about um, pink aesthetics, and when you get into the pink preparations, is the placement of adhesion. When you are uh, super coronal, then you can take a bend of brush and you have a class three or an incisal edge or something, and you're isolated up there. When you are doing um, pink prosthetics or pink composites, what, this is very delicate. And the way that you avoid debris in your bonding agents, you have two things you apply adhesion with, a bend -a brush, which I call a mop, and the micro brush, which is a very detailed um, applying um, instrument. So if you do the one layer adhesion, there's no second layer, as you know, on universal adhesion. The first one you do is the application of the universal bonding agent and not to create a lot of debris. You can detail it with a dry micro brush. Then I would dry the bender brush in a gauze uh, pad, and then I would swipe that sulcus um, with a dry bender brush and go all the way up the proximal margins to make sure you don't have any debris that can cause irritation and uh, affect your bond. So now we could say we didn't want to, we're not going to bevel the preparation. Um, we could say uh, we're going to use one shade using your white technique. Uh, that's okay. The reason for the flowable base that I helped develop is I think the flowable base is a underlayment. It is a base layer. If you so want, you don't have to, but when controlled, you don't want that going over your margins. It's a very thin layer. You can um, mix it uh, after you apply it. You can take an Explorer tip and just smooth it out and get it into different layers. 
it is a base layer that um, can cause less polymerization shrinkage. It acts to hold down the layer since there's no beveling here for the final layer is that I'm very keen on adhesion, meticulous. Whether it's white technique, my technique, we have to be meticulous with adhesion. Now, whether you use pink flowable or not, what I would recommend, and when you uh, sign up for the workshop, you're gonna get three instruments, is everything I transfer, if you've taken my um, tooth colored workshops, is transferred with a ball burnisher. You roll up the increment in your hands, in your gloves, and you apply it to the tip of the ball burnisher, whether it be large, whether it be small, and just place it gently into the box. And then you just take the ball and manipulate it. You spread it um, wherever you want, and it obeys the handling char characteristics and properties of beautiful two gingiva are exquisite. Um, it's not only bioactive, but it handles like a champ. Now, once you do that, if we use your white technique, then what we want to do is take a long bladed IPC, and American Eagle makes these, Cosmodent makes these. Um, we want long bladed because you need a long blade to get at some very um, uh, unique places in the gingiva. And we always go from bottom to top, swipe bottom to top, whether it's proximal, whether it's um, smoothing out the material, we never go back from the top of the restoration to the bottom. That will result in, uh, it would pull away. So we just don't want to do that. Now, you can just stop with one layer, that's okay. You would uh, no, you use your white technique. Now, it, after I um, light cure that, now I've left room for the second layer in add dimension and texture. And then once again, we apply with the ball burnisher and we put that in there. And with a long bladed IPC, you can see I'm very gently teasing and create a virtual sulcus the anatomical sulcus is down below. The virtual sulcus is up above. It's an illusion. And illusions work from three feet. Now, after the protocol of polishing, finishing, and we can make it real simple. We can make it your white technique. You don't have to put the stimpling in. You don't have to create the sulcus. But when you do go on your journey in pink prosthetics, um, pink composites, this is possible. And this is very artistic. You don't have to start your journey there. Now, this is another way to look at it. They're very different looking than white composites. They are more translucently uh, translucent. They have depth of color. They're not perfect matches. They're simulation. They're illusions. Okay. Now, when we get to the second case, this will be my way. And you could use your way just like you did before. This is when you get multiple defects of different sizes, different shapes. And now you need a little more learning, a little more practice before you treat these. Okay. We have different scout burrs. First of all, we'll get our shade tab, whether we want blended shades or not. We take the scout bird to find out where our, our primary preparation will be and do it. How deep do you go? Well, you, you don't have to go too deep on these and because the nerve is close. Um, you just want it. That's what the scout bird is for. Follow a curvilinear, uh, curvilinear uh, margin. You can slightly undercut uh, all margins gently to get me uh, mechanical uh, retention. And this is the preparation, what they look like. We have curved uh, margins. That's a tip tonight. No bleeding, no bleeding, selective etch, meticulous management of adhesion, whether it's beauty bond, visco, whatever you want, use your universal adhesion uh, with uh, gymers and the beautiful two gingiva. You can use any adhesion that you want. 
This is how we create the flowable um, box if you want. Now, this is how we can wind up with one layer if you want, and we can, um, we can create some striations, smooth it out with a one gloss uh, polisher. Um, it's anything you want your journey to be, whether it's white technique, whether it's my technique, your technique, uh, you're giving your patient a good service using pink composites in a real tight one-to-one um, uh, -one, uh, view. You can see how translucent these are. They're they're really kind of neat chameleons that in inherit the color of the environment. Now, in the Burkhead, um, I put a marginator, a very fine uh, yellow diamond that you marginate, you can put that at a 30 degree bevel and, and verify all your finish lines and smooth out the composite with no bleeding. This is uh, what I would call mandatory to teach pink prosthetics. This is the one gloss polisher to smooth things out. You can um, add a little texture if you want in the advanced classes that I'll teach you. We'll teach you how to put micro texture, sulcus, um, caulk the sulcus so you can't detect a little lip. And then we start going into this domain in this dimension where there's no gingival irritation. The uh, prosthetic uh, material is now uh, juxtaposed to the uh, anatomical uh, margin of that and we offer some uh, support. And this is, would be after um, the stippling and the polishing, if you want micro texture, you don't have to. You can just do one layer and you can just do it your way and give your patient a benefit. Now, let's talk about tips and tricks for Pink's aesthetic. I had no teacher. Um, I had no mentors, only Christian Coachman in the literature that I study his work and I devised my own work that I'm sharing with you tonight. So the tips and tricks for the material, the shade selection, the mixing chart, the burr kit, the instrumentation, there's some tips I can give you. You might even have material right now and you can incorporate some of this. First of all, draw a pencil line on your margins. It's mandatory. You have to scribe what is white and what is gonna be pink. That's the anatomical curvature of the crown. You don't have to, but you can use an inverted cone. There's two of them in the bird kit, a small one for detailing and a larger one for larger preparations. And with water spray, of course, in very fine um, finger rest, you can do a mechanical underlock of all the margins, just like if you're doing a gold foil, which I have done. Selective etch for the uh, superior aspect or uh, total etch, whatever you want, disinfectant, mandatory, uh, things like that. You want to total biological chemical seal of the gum tissue. And again, this is the application. Either we're using Benda brushes that I'll call mops or micro brushes for meticulous management of adhesion. And when you air thin, you don't blow the air into the sulcus, you blow the air from the, sulc from the sulcus to the crown into an evacuation tube. Tips and tricks, you can use flowable composite if you want, you don't have to. Um, it's part of my uh, technique that I teach because you're developing a pink appearance and also to manage the shrinkage and improve the adaptation. Use the color mixing chart. If you're picking one shade, that's great. But here shows you a combination of different shades. If you so wish, use a ball burnisher very carefully, micromanage the material, and you, you don't have to cut the composite with an IPC. You'll reduce the voids. I put a marginator in here. It's a very fine-tipped uh, a bio-integration of the material into the um, uh, gingival tissues. And when you do this, you go from the gingival 
to the incisal, you never take the explorer and go backwards, go down into the apex. Then you're going to dislodge the material. Uh, marginators, um, you can use these dry, so you can see that it's touching everything. Uh, that's a tip. And if you take the hands-on course, I'll show you how to use it. The one gloss, add a little texture. You can call it a day with water spray. You can gloss these out pretty easy. So if we look at this, what's the next step for your journey right now? Is you can do nothing. You can just say, I'm going to go buy a kit. And I took a Milner's course. I'm just going to do what he said, and I'm going to do it myself. That's not a problem. You can just buy the kit that they're going to offer. I'll show you what that is. You can just buy it. You don't need mentoring. You don't need a type of don't. You don't need instruments. You, you, you can just figure it out, and some of you can do that pretty easy. When you start looking at the components of all the things in the pink aesthetic toolkit, you're going to see you get all the gingiva, uh, beautiful two gingiva. You get the shade tabs, a laminated co uh, color mixing chart, one gloss polishers, the pink prep kit, the instruments, and the beauty bond, everything that is essential to create pink prosthetics. Now, if you want mentoring, if you would like me to be your virtual teacher, I am proud to say with Shofu and Catapult that I hold in high regard and esteem, we are going to hold a, the first virtual uh, pink composite workshop on November 17th. The fee for the course is $300. Now, that includes all materials, that includes the type of dot, that includes the tutorials that will include the step cards that you can use in your operatories. And we can start out easy. And that's what we plan to do is um, have an easy to understand, ready to do tomorrow technique using the white that you used to do. And now you were trading up into pink prosthetics for defects with my tutelage and my mentoring and a step-by-step -step guide. And this is what we can do after that is to start doing, um, starting tomorrow, you can do some of these cases like that. I've designed a super kind of cool prosthetic uh, type of that we can use for the, um, the first hands-on workshop and perhaps the second. Now, if you look at the cost of individual products in this toolkit, we really have to thank Shofu for stepping up and making this a easy purchase, cost savings like I haven't seen before. Plus you get the mentoring um, and you get the um, way to learn step-by-step. Step. And if you look at all the components on all of these things, it adds up. It could be $425. Do the math. It's real easy. If you spend $425 without a mentor, without a type um, you could save $125 instantly, plus get the, um, the, the mentoring, the virtual mentoring that you need. So, what I have to say is you should start your journey in pink prosthetics. With an aging population, I think it's the thing that's not going to go away. And I hope that you will do this. I hope that you will sign up for the pink workshop. Um, I've invested a lot of my time into this because I care about you. I care about your patients. I care about the gingiva. I care about the um, the pink solutions that are uh, therapeutic. Um, they're easy to handle. They have a step-by-step -step chart. They could be used with your white technique, only we're using pink colors. This is something I think that should be part of your journey. At the end of the journey, uh, the end of the pink workshop, we can have easy cases that you can treat right away. Now, if you want to 
start doing medium difficult cases, you mean you may take a little more practice to get to that level. And that's what I'm for there here for is to be your mentor and teacher. And if you want to get into difficult cases, it's going to take you more practice and practice makes perfect. So I want to thank you. This is um, how you contact me. Um, I want to thank Shofu for allowing me to be part of the um, creation of Beautiful Two Jinjava and give me license to create for the good of the all for the profession. I'd like to thank uh, Catapult for being a, a forward thinking uh, hub of education and sharing of knowledge with some excellent speakers. So I want to thank you for that. And let's see, we have some Q&A. Um, can this be applied to full zirconia crowns? You have to be careful because um, when you bond to cementum or dentin, we have megapascal strength that is uh, can be quantified. Um, I would be cautious because... Um, what Shofu does have is Sara resin um, that you have to, bonding to zirconia is very difficult. I would be very careful. If you have a zirconia crown that has gingival recession on it, well, then you can apply the pink prosthetic technique. Um, in the literature, I'd be very careful about uh, bonding to zirconia. Um, for pink, uh, here's another question for pink restorations, ADA codes. Okay, here's a good, here's an answer. When you start your journey, use ADA codes, one surface, anterior, two surface, whatever it is. Um, please do that. When you get to a certain level of mastery, then you can charge fee for service. And this is customized. This is sulcus reproduction. This is closing dark triangles. The, these are for people, the boomers who will pay cash. And otherwise, I would uh, tell you to just use your ADA codes. Use your white technique. Uh, don't take up too much time. Just use pink. Uh, another question, what happens to sensitivity? Well, truth be told, the sensitivity should disappear. Is because when you are... Um, applying a bonding agent and sealing the dentinal tubes. And if you manage your, uh, your C factors correctly, you don't get hydraulics of flow and get uh, um, things that are causing sensitivity, you're actually decreasing sensitivity. Here's another question. What would you suggest if the patient doesn't like it? Well, I'm making an assumption. Let's say you do pink. And you have to tell the patient, you have to qualify the patient. Um, you have to say, can I work with this patient? Um, the answer is if they're too meticulous, they expect um, perfection. That's probably not the patient you want to deal with because they may take you uh, for a ride with white materials. Um, they would probably not be happy with pink prosthetics too. Um, let's see, and also I have to tell you how to register for the course. Um, in the initial case they showed, I missed what, what material the optional underlayer is. Okay, that is the, the pink flowable by Shofu. Okay, Shofu has it in the, in the uh, beautiful two ginger of a kit. There's a pink flowable composite. It's a tinted composite, and I like that a lot. Um, are the kits available through uh, dental suppliers, or do we need to purchase them? No, nope. you get them from Shine, Benko, Patterson. Get them from a direct distributor. You'll be fine. Um, another question is, how do patients respond to the results? If you qualify the patient, if you take and say three feet. Um, this is the illusion at three feet. If they have a hand mirror and they want to take you six inches, that's probably not the patient you want to do this. Um, most of the time they're thrilled. 
whether you use one shade, no, no uh, sulcus, uh, they're, they're very thrilled on that. Um, can you show an embrasure case? How do you code them? Well, the embrasure cases are going to be different because that is dark triangle closure, and that is a um, more of a complex um, case. And um, you do that with a combination of white first, then do a cutback, and then overlay it with that. Um, have you ever mixed both pink and white composites in one case? Um, no. Um, I suppose you could, um, but I think you either uh, establish your your domain as white or pink. Where does pink start or end? Where does white start or end? Um, can you use Gluma primer under pink composite? Um, I believe the answer is yes. Uh, if you like glutaraldehyde, I'm not a, a Gluma fan, uh, but I suppose you could do it. Um, can this be used to hide exposed margins from PFM crowns? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. This is a slam dunk. This is, you're not going to bond to the PFM. You're going to butt up to it and get a little bit of um, adhesion. It's picture perfect to do a uh, great service to your, uh, your patients. Um, here's another one, one of my sponsors. Have you ever tried using OptiSculpt Pad? The answer is yes. OptiSculpt Pad, if you take any of my other restorative courses, OptiSculpt Pad, especially the small ones, could be very, very useful um, to um, pad down the, the material. I think that's a great question. Uh, can you use only pink flowable composite? The answer would be not at this time. Once the manufacturers create a stackable pink composite that has the physical properties of the flowable, then I think then it'll be time that we can use a no flow uh, with a pink flowable. Um, how about pink composite staining over time? Uh-uh, nope. If you don't polish it correctly, if you don't layer it, just like white, if you have voids, if you have pits, if you have things to trap bacteria, plaque, biofilm, anything is going to um, stain. Have I seen any debonding when I was using white composites? Absolutely. I was using white techniques um, with no interlocking. And since I've developed the pink composite kit? Uh, the answer is no. They're locked in. You have uh, macro mechanical retention under all sextants of that preparation. Um, that answer is no. I'll take one more question. I really like to use my hands with gloves to make composite the ball or the increment. I wonder, would there be a problem of contamination in the composite? The answer is no. Now to give you another pearl. When Sharon, my my assistant that been with me for 31 years, when we start doing white composites or pink composites, I hold out my nitrile gloves, and what she does is take a alcohol gauze and she wipes the fingertips. I shake the the my glove in the air to evaporate the alcohol, and um, uh, then I roll the the composite increment. So. That's the answer of that. It is my privilege and my uh, passion to bring this to you, just like Shofu's passion to bring pink composite, just like Catapult's passion to bring you diverse, uh, creative uh, educational forums. What I want to do is to say good night to you because we're at a little after seven o'clock. And um, I wish you well on your journey. It's going to go someplace, but don't just settle for white. Use your white technique. Use pink. It's just another, another color. So with that, I want to say good evening. And uh, it's been my privilege to be part of your evening of sharing of knowledge and information. And thank you to Shofu. Thank you to Catapult. And I wish you well. Thank you.